All right, uh, this is probably going to be one of the first videos that I make that I would consider probably more like a tutorial. Um, we're going to make some simple fog. This is what it was going to look like at the end. We're going to have a blend control of how harsh that offset is, as well as a distance control, uh, as well as color. Uh, let's get started. Let's make something similar to this. All right, uh, so first things first. We need to make a post-process material. Uh, so I already have some pre-made ones, but we're going to make a new one. So this is going to be material uh, fog. Okay, we're going to open that. I'm going to already make the... I'm going to right-click make the material instance immediately. And we're going to actually just assign it uh, to our post-process. That's what's selected here. Uh, we add it to the post-process material. So uh, this is actually really easy to do. It's something I've seen a lot of people have uh, questions about how to do, and the nice thing is you can utilize it other places, like uh, limiting the distance that a post-process volume goes, uh, and other ideas like that. So first thing we need to do is we need to change from surface type to post-process. Now, I am going to add a seam texture, and we're going to say change that to post-process input zero okay if we mask this uh and do set it to rgb plug that in you'll see that that is just the normal scene that you'll get returned there uh but we want fog so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a lerp or linear interpolate okay and this is gonna be the results for a and then i'm gonna hit i'm gonna hit three on the keyboard and left click right click that and make this a parameter this is gonna be our fog color and you'll notice it kind of already is making a difference. And that's because this alpha is set to 0 0.5. So it's giving half of this, half of that. Okay, uh, the two main ways that I normally see this done is either using a sphere mask. Or, since we're going to do it based on the camera, we're going to use a camera fade. And this is going to fade based on the, the depth from the camera. Um, and that's a pretty easy setup. Overall, uh, both of these would get you a similar result. So if you're more used to a sphere mask already, you can use it. And it has easy radius and hardness controls built in. All right, so we're going to plug that into alpha. You'll notice uh, we don't see anything, though. Uh, the reason why is because to use this, we actually need this bool to be set to true. Uh, so now you'll see it's completely black. And we've already got our fade done, right? So now what we need to do is just set up two scalar parameters. So we're going to make that a parameter. This is going to be called the fog um, start uh, distance. And I'm going to call this one the fog blend uh, distance. I'm actually going to flip these around because this has built in fade offset. That's actually fade start. Fade length, the length of the fade, how long it takes to fade out. I'm going to set this to a basic 1500 and that's where the fog is going to start. Now it's 1500 away from the camera. And that's why I said we can kind of this alpha depending on what we needed. So say we didn't want this to start from the player camera, which if we double click in here, you'll see that the way this works is it's taking the camera position and the absolute world position. And it's using that data to figure out where this fade's coming from. So we could plug this into anything, and you'll see a different result. Um, and I'll actually show that in a, in a minute once we're done here. Um, and then fade blend distance. I'm going to set this to like 500. That means it's going to blend over 500 units, okay? And that's it, basically. You'll notice, so the bad thing about this is if we take this, and there's certain object might not come across on the video but there's certain objects that have this little outline on it step there is you need to come here uh make sure that nothing's in focus or you click on the clear attributes there and you're going to scroll all the way down and set this to be before tone mapping and that will fix that issue okay um and now if we go to our fog that we have already set up remember we set up the fog instance on the post process already uh we can just fully control fog color uh to be whatever color we want and then just set it to a different distance um and we could have our fog uh the nice thing about this is this is this could be relatively cheap compared to the built-in fog we could also make it where overall this just like so, so something like mobile or have it where we have a harsher, we just get overall more control of like a harsh fog volume. Anyways, I hope this helped. Now, obviously, that was a very basic thing. And uh, I'll, I hope to do some more videos like this in the future. I'm going to pause here uh, so you can see all that it is. It is a relatively simple material, um, but this can lead you to something a little more advanced, such as these. So this is that same principle. 
except I'm using it to project on the landscape and everywhere else, but not have it where it's filling our screen with that color, right? And that's the same, this post process has the same exact principle as the one we just made. So hopefully that helps you on your little journey of learning material and uh, hit that subscribe button, all that YouTube stuff. <laughs> uh, see you next time.